So we're going to throw a little bit taller cylinder. I'm going to talk about getting the clay out of the bottom and the rate at which you need to pull so that you're not taking too long to make a piece before it gets all soft and wants to slump. So I'm going to press down and get it stuck. Centering and centering quickly is important to pulling a tall cylinder too because you're adding less water to the clay. I'm going to cone up. It comes out of the top of my hands and cone back down. Repeat that until it's in the middle. I'm going to open it up. Opening it up is important too. Um, there are a lot of things that people do that, that don't make sense to me. Um, and opening straight down is one of them. If you open straight down, that you've got no real strength to push against the clay, and the clay can kind of move you wherever. Um, in a smaller piece of clay, it doesn't matter as much. When you start working with larger, it does a lot. If you open it up on the side, it's kind of self-centering, that it's automatically pushing the clay in the middle. Also, when you open it up and it starts to widen, this clay, when you first do your first pull, will get pulled into the wall so that you get more height without actually having to pull more. Now I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to move out, keeping the bottom flat, and out towards 3 o'clock. The reason why I want to do everything at 3 o'clock is that if it is applying pressure, if the clay sticks or, you know, it begins to get dry, that the only place that this hand can go is forward and if it goes forward it's coming off the clay. If I'm working on this side of the wheel at all, whether I'm whether it's coning down like this and I'm applying pressure over here or using a tool on this side, if it catches, it gets driven into the clay until it, you know, makes a dent and then gets pulled around. On this side, it just gets pulled away and doesn't cause any damage. Same with working here. If I work here and it gets caught, I, it drives into the clay. Also on this side, when there's too much torque and the clay's pulling away, it just lets go. If I'm if I'm not if I don't stick in the clay over here, I'll be causing a lot of torque to happen. It's always best to work at three o'clock, whether you're centering, coning up, coning down, opening it up. If you can work here, it's best. So I'm gonna pull up now. I'm gonna take my scissors for cookie. I'm gonna press with these two parts of my fingers on the inside and my crampy finger. As I pull up, I'm actually gonna move this finger to the top and press down a little bit. That's gonna stop it from becoming uneven. Also, I actually do wanna make sure I'm pressing them together, that I'm establishing a thickness and keeping that thickness all the way to the top. As I get towards the top, I wanna to release that pressure so I'm not applying torque and causing it to twist or get too thin at the top. So I'm gonna to squeeze together and move up. As I move up, I wanna to move towards the center too and then let go. Compress the rim. Wet it inside and out, top to bottom. It's really important that all the surfaces are wet. If, it, if there's a dry spot, it can stick to your hand and cause the piece to rip. Because throwing isn't just about throwing tall, because you want to use the clay to its best advantage. So you also have to throw thin. And you need to take all the considerations in terms of how wet the clay is and how well it slides. So I'm actually applying quite a lot of pressure right now, I'm moving up and towards the center. You see that the pull marks are about a quarter of an inch apart. That quarter of an inch means I'm keeping the same amount of speed as I go up and I'm just releasing the pressure as I go. You want to pull consistently to pull tall. If you go inconsistently as you pull, you can get thinness and thickness variations. I'm going to collar in. This is again going to add a little bit of height to it and actually make the clay a little bit thicker so I can pull more. See how the lip is starting to get a little off? That's a bad thing. I'm going to cut the top off to keep it even. Compress it and start the pull at the bottom again. Now this part right here is about the thickness that I want. It's only this part right here that is still thick. So I'm going to squeeze in down there and as I get up to here I'm going to release the pressure. Make sure it's wet. and then start to release that pressure. So this started out as a pound and a half of clay and is now about a 12 inch cylinder. 
which I can do pretty much anything that I want with if I wanted to make a vase or a jar. But I want to just press this one out and cut it in half so you can see how far it'll go being as thin as it is. And so you can get an idea of the limitations of clay. So I'm going to cut the skirt off again. Flexible metal rib of death. Wet the inside so it's nice and smooth and press out against it. Also when the clay is thin, it gives a lot quicker and responds a lot more to your touch so that you can make shapes that are a little more um, bulbous and it takes a lot less effort to get them to go out. You also have to be careful then of them collapsing because if they go too far out, they're just going to give up. Give a little notch up here, pull this ring out. Generic little vase. But this one too, we're going to cut in half so you can see how thin it is. So again, it's that thinness that gives it the height. If it was too thick, it would still be short. So a nice thin pot is going to give you a good amount of height.